Wednesday, November 8th. Welcome to CT Pulse on the HAN Network. I'm Kate Chaplinski and joined in studio right now by John Kovach after a long election night, but an exciting night. John, uh, we were here with live election night coverage provided by our news staff. Now, in many of the southwestern Connecticut towns with strong Republican bases, John, we saw Democrats sweeping some races, including in Wilton, Ridgefield, Redding. Democrats doing very well picking up seats on town boards and councils. Um, I think especially, John, maybe you could speak to it, but the Weston first selectman race, also very interesting. What blew me away about that was the margin of victory that you had an incumbent first selectman lose by, I believe it was just shy of 1,200 votes, which is just an incredible margin of victory. And you were saying earlier, I mean, it really does seem like a party line, a lot of party line voting in there, this election. There really was. We saw Democratic sweeps in some towns, and some people are attributing that to a uh, backlash against the current administration in the White House. That may be the case in some races. But you also saw some towns that went very strong Republican, mm -hmm. Stratford being one. Stratford is a town where the Democrats basically rode a tidal wave two years ago and took total control of the town council. And now the Republicans are 7-3 in charge of that, and the Republicans hold on to the mayoral office in, in Stratford. Uh, no contest in Monroe. They go Republican. Yeah. And uh, then we saw some interesting results in, in Ridgefield and Reading as well. Yeah, very interesting. Now, now going back to Stratford a bit, as you mentioned, uh, Laura Hoydick, who's a current state representative, she will become the town's first female mayor. Uh, she won that in that three-way race, uh, John Harkins opting not to run again. He's the current mayor. Now, Melvin Mason actually spoke with Laura Hoydick uh, last night, so let's take a look at that interview. All right, Laura Hoydick, uh, the new mayor of the town of Stratford. Uh, congratulations on your win. Thank you, Melvin Mason, the editor of the Stratford Star. Okay, so tell me, uh, how do you feel right now after this, uh, after this big win? I'm uh, really happy, and I, I'm excited and ecstatic, and uh, frankly, I'm glad that Election Day has come and it's over. <laughs> okay, so uh, what do you think this win means uh, for yourself and for the town? I think what it means for the town is that, one, now we have a, a first female mayor, which we were going to have regardless of yeah. who won, and two, I think that this council slate will uh, work unified and very well together, and I'm looking forward to doing that. Yeah, and actually I know that, of course, you mentioned the whole thing of the, uh, the slate. You mentioned that it was 7 out of 10 Republicans will uh, join the council. Uh, 7 out of 10 Re Republicans will join the town council. Uh, a, a big swing from uh, two years ago when it was 6, six, uh, six to 4 for the Democrats. Uh, what do you think that means for the town, and what do you think that uh, says about what the town's mood is? Well, I think what it says is that maybe people wanted to change, and so they elected our folks unanimously pretty much except for the um, returning other three, David's returning and Greg is returning and Wally. So at least we have their experience on the council to help us uh, formulate the plan for Stratford for the next two years. Okay. Uh, now, how confident were you going into tonight uh, about this result and you emerging as the, uh, as the winner? Uh, I'm never confident because you don't count your chickens before you're hatched and I'm a little suspicious. Okay. Uh, I'm glad it worked out this way, but uh, both the uh, other two candidates, um, Sandra Zalek, Stephanie Phillips, uh, worked very hard on their efforts to become the first mayor, woman mayor. So, um, just happy to work out this way for me, and I'm very happy to do it. All right, then. So now uh, you're the mayor. Obviously, you're going to take a little time to celebrate and enjoy this. Uh, it also kind of says, I would imagine this speaks pretty well for the, uh, the Stratford Republican Party with seven with seven council wins, as well as yourself now at the hel helm. Uh, you know, what, is, what do you think about the, the Republican Party now in Stratford? Well, I think it gives us an opportunity to maybe do things a little differently um, that we have in the past, but still, the most important thing is to working together and working with the, with the um, electorate and figuring out what the vision is for Stratford and, and developing it. I also think that there's some interesting parts about um, zoning, being a Republican held again, the Board of Ed will not be, so um, the whole mission about working together with the Board of Ed still holds, and I'm just hoping we can do it collaboratively in a nonpartisan fashion. Okay, and uh, I guess what will be your first move uh, when you become mayor? What will be the first thing you do? Uh, 
college to uh, figure out how to get into town hall. How to get into town hall? Okay. How about as far as the um, uh, how about as far as the um, uh, the budget? Because obviously that's the big thing that's hanging over the town now. The state budget picture is clear. Uh, what about the town budget and uh, getting that resolved? So again, uh, there's a city council. And that city council doesn't leave until almost the middle of December. So hopefully we will work collaboratively together, old council, new council, figure out the best pathway forward. Um, they have two years of experience under their belts. We're coming in relatively new. Um, we still have the mayor and his administration, and I'm hoping that we can figure out a plan before we all take office in December. Okay, so you plan on working with the with the uh, with the with the old council and maybe talking with them in terms of like getting a chance to hash out a budget? Absolutely. Uh, well, I, I think we have to if we want to do something before uh, December 12th or 14th or whenever swearing in is. Then I think we need to work together. Okay. All right. Last words as you uh, celebrate your victory as the uh, first female mayor in Stratford history. Uh, thank you, Stratford. Here's to civility. Here's to respect. Here's to making Stratford better than it is. Okay. All right, Laura. Congratulations again, and uh, thank you for your time. Thank you, Melvin. All right. Bye. All right, thanks again to Melvin Mason for that video with Laura Hoydick, who won the race for mayor in Stratford. Now, moving on to New Canaan, John, uh, a town where Republicans held on in New Canaan, but it was by a pretty slim margin. Kevin Moynihan, the Republican candidate, won uh, by 33 votes over Democrat Kit Devereaux in the first selectman's race. Now, uh, New Canaan has never had a Democrat in the first selectman's office, still doesn't now, but it was a very tight race, John. I don't know that anybody expected expected it to be this close, even those who thought it might go the other way. I mean, I don't think anybody expects a 33-vote margin. That only six clear of the margin that would have triggered an automatic recount. 27 mm -hmm. votes would have automatically sent it to a recount. They were six over that. Kit Devereaux did concede. Right. And we actually have uh, Moynihan's reaction to how close the race was uh, captured on video from NC Advertiser. Let's take a look at that. Uh, I, I'm just surprised it was so close. I guess um, they were, the headwinds were stronger than I anticipated. And, uh, but Kit, um, a win is a win. I'm sorry about the camera. Now, Kit Devereaux also reacting to the tight race, saying, saying that she was happy with the results and she's going to continue to represent New Canaan on the Board of Selectmen. Let's take a look at that. Chairman of that yeah. town council. Well, well, 33 <laughs> votes is pretty close. And I'm thrilled that we did as well as we did. How are you doing, Joan? so many people that were involved yeah. Yeah. that made this happen. I will be on the Board of Selectmen, and from there I will be working for the people of New Canaan. And I look forward to it. And so that's some reaction uh, from both New Canaan candidates last night. John, you actually have an interesting uh, piece of news. Got this from Greg Riley at the New Canaan Advertiser, who was keeping us abreast of the situation there all uh, night long. And the Republicans invited Kit Devereaux to their victory celebration at the Roger Sherman Inn. She graciously accepted that nomination and the advertiser has a photo running in this week's edition i kind of wish we had video of a shared standing ovation for kevin moynihan and kit Devereaux. they will work together on the board of selectmen as you just said this is what we need as we wake up the day after election day is to come together and move forward yeah i mean i did think it was interesting in moynihan's uh just quick comment on how tight the race was. He mentioned maybe, you know, things have just turned that much. And there was a lot of discussion leading up to the cam, uh, leading up to the election about, you know, his ties working with President-elect Trump on his finance committee at the time. Uh, he went to school with Paul Manafort. There was that discussion, and we did see that popping up, as we said, in some towns like Wilton, uh, where Jeanette Ross thought that maybe some of uh, national politics kind of leaking into local. Well, you had the situation in Wilton, too, of the Board of Education members who's, uh, or the member whose old tweets had come up, right. um, or candidate, I should say, uh, whose old tweets had come up with support for the Confederate flag and some other things that had gotten people riled up a mm. bit. So you, you, we had, did see some national politics creep down for whatever reason, for better, for worse. My concern on the day after election day, particularly with big swings, yeah. is was this an overcorrection? Right. Did, did a town, did a voter base 
oversteer, okay, I'm tired of the way party A is doing things, I want to elect all party B's guys. And you can really end up putting your town into a years long skid there. Right. What you need is more of what we saw after the election in New Canaan where the parties do come together and that's what I think has to happen in a lot of these towns. I know for a fact it won't. Yeah, well, you know, someone that spoke about that actually was Darian First Selectman Jamie Stevenson. She won pretty handily last night against Rob Richards um, and third party candidate Chris No. Uh, it was not a great night for Democrats in Darianne, actually. Uh, Jamie Stevenson won her fourth term, and her opponent, Rob Richards, did not get enough votes to actually stay on the board of selectmen. That was the big surprise to me because generally an incumbent on the board of selectmen even with a run for first selectman, will finish high enough in the race to supplant one of the candidates for board and hold on to his or her seat. And in this case, everybody who ran for board outpolled Richards, right. which got, it caught me off guard. I yeah. really didn't expect that. You know, so Jamie spoke after her win about running a good campaign um, and focusing on local issues. We have some video of that. Let's take a look. And what I want to say is we ran a really positive campaign for the town of Darien. There's so much going on in the world of politics at the state level and the federal level, but everything is local and all of our all of our issues are very nonpartisan, so we chose to take the high road and I think the numbers bear out that that voters um, prefer candidates that will always take the high road. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 So we, I really want everybody to continue to enjoy our victory this evening. We will welcome onto the board Pam Sparkman. Um, we will be very hopeful and we'll be helpful to Pam um, in um, helping her learn the ins and outs of joining the board of selectmen and we'll thank selectman Rob Richards for his tenure on the board and of course um, welcome Mark Thorne back. Um, and we'll celebrate tonight but tomorrow morning we're going to wake up with a new mission. And our mission tomorrow morning is to take the majority in the House and Senate and the gubernatorial race in 2018 and turn this state back around. All right, that Jamie Stevenson who won re-election to Darianne for Selectman. Now another really interesting race was in Trumbull last night, but we are going to step out for a break. And when we come back, Donald Ang, the Trumbull Times editor, is going to join us to talk more about that right after this. Now teeing off, Paul Miller from Miller Nissan in Fairfield. Excuse me, Mr. Miller. What about my new Sentra? Right now, lease a 2017 Sentra S for only $97 a month. He is never going to retire. Bankwell combines the best personalized service with high-tech banking features for our customers' convenience. We pride ourselves on being a strong community partner. You don't settle for average in anything else you do. Why settle for an average bank? Don't just bank when you can bank well instead. Visit mybankwell.com for more. Manfredi New Canaan is celebrating three exceptional years selling Rolex watches and fine jewelry to the Fairfield County community. We appreciate all our loyal clients and look forward to welcoming and helping you discover the perfect gift to celebrate life's most important occasions. At InSports Trumbull, the game is always on inside. Registration is now open for our fitness training programs for high school athletes. The InSports Performance Center is offering blast speed classes, athletic functional movement assessments, and both men's and women's elite speed and strength training. Our premier programs help bring athletes to the next level. Call 203-268-1214 for more information. Like and follow us on Facebook. 
Welcome back to CT Pulse on the HAN Network. I'm Kate Chaplinski with John Kovach in studio and now joined by Donald Ang, editor of the Trumbull Times, to talk about what was a very exciting night in Trumbull, a big shift there, Don, for Democrats. Yeah, well, after eight years of uh, Republicans essentially controlling all of Trumbull, that was, you know, the Tim Herbst administration, everything, town council, town uh, board of finance, board of education, uh, it was a big night for the Democrats. Vicky Tesoro uh, beats uh, Republican Paul Lavoie. Uh, Democrats turn a 15 to 6 Republican council. They turn that around. That is now an 11 to 10 <laughs> Democrat council. Uh, the, um, the Republicans did hold on to the Board of Finance, 4-2, and they held on to the Board of Education, 4-3. But uh, all in all, it was really a very big night for, uh, for Democrats in Trumbull. What does the 11-10 split on the council portend for uh, Vicky Tesoro? Do, do we see that as being a problem or does the majority of one give her enough to be able to get some things through? Well, I think she can get s some of her things through because I think uh, that just her her, her personality will kind of, uh, she's not she's not really by nature a, a hardline partisan. Uh, I think also with with an 11 member 11 member majority, you're going to see things like that um, that seven council district uh, uh, petition that uh, that residents had wanted. You're probably going to see that in front of the council. You're probably going to see uh, you, you're probably going to see sooner than later a referendum on that community center that um, that Vicky has not really has not really opposed, but she has said that she wants a vote on it before uh, before the town sinks any more money into the into the plan and design of the project. So I think uh, as far as those things goes, really you're just looking at votes. Uh, so I, and, and I don't think there's going to be too much trouble with getting that passed through, a, uh, through the council there. So what was the atmosphere like at a Democratic headquarters last night when that news came in? Well, when the news came in, it was like you know it was like New Year's Eve. <laughs> everyone you know everyone was uh, was toasting and hugging. Uh, had I think you know people were uh, people were congratulating uh, me. I don't think they knew who I was. They were just <laughs> they, they, they were just hugging everyone. They, they were just hugging everyone in the uh, in in the room. Oh, you got a lot of hugs last night, Todd. Uh, not a lot, but 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 the uh, the ones I did get uh, were you know sort of sort of uh, awkward. Awkward. But, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, and you know, and, and the funny thing was, they weren't really. They, when I got there, they were sort of pensive. You know, Tom mm. Kelly said to me that Tom Kelly said I would have liked more turnout. There were right was they, a little bit of a lower turnout, which is interesting. It, it, it was. I think uh, it was running about seven percent lower than two years ago. Seven percentage points uh, lower than uh, than two years ago, which was a surprise. You know, they had that third candidate. Candidate Michael Redgate was in the race. I, I had thought that would kind of drive up turnout. Uh, so I, I don't really know what to attribute that to. The weather wasn't great, but turnout was down all day long. It wasn't like the last two hours it tailed off. Turnout was just low all around. So um, that was a bit of a mystery, and that kind of had the Democrats a little bit nervous. But then as those first results came in, uh, you could feel the, the the room started to get you know started to build. And then uh, and then by the time they realized that Vicky had won. Uh, th then you know that touched off the party, and then when they realized it was going to be a Democratic majority on the council, uh, then you know uh, then it was just Mardi Gras for, for the rest of the night. <laughs> I'm totally puzzled by the turnout there because I would have yeah. thought with you were guaranteed a new first selectman that there would be an energized base. I know you had some people who were very fervent Michael Redgate supporters. Um, I don't, you know, obviously not that many, but that's a he pulled a decent number yeah. for a third he, party he candidate. He did, you know, he, um, I, I had, uh, we had been, uh, the, 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 the campaigns and I had kind of been just guessing where we thought he would be. We had the sense that people did like him and that he wasn't, he wasn't what you might call a normal uh, independent candidate. He, he was very well known around town, very well liked around town. The Democrats privately thought he would do about 10%. Uh, the Republicans actually had him higher. The Republicans had him at about 15%, and he actually did better than that. He was uh, he, he was closer to 18%, so did a very either, big turn, turnout for him. Did either theorize as to where his base would come from, the left or the right? Uh, yes, they both did, and they both thought that he would draw from the other side, hmm. more so from them. Uh, he was the only candidate in the race that had children in the school system. He's very well known uh, in the, uh, among school parents, uh, so you would think that traditionally those would be uh, Democratic-leaning voters. But he also ran a campaign of, uh, of cost cutting and, and fiscal restraint, which would kind of be right in the Republicans' wheelhouse. So right. it was it was a bit up in the air where he would draw votes from. And if you look at the results, um, Vicky Tesoro won that race with uh, with Michael Redgate in it by about five points. Uh, if you look down the ticket, uh, Anthony Musto, Democrat, beat John Ponzio by about. Five percent. So uh, it really appears he kind of drew equally from both sides. It, he, he didn't really. Uh, 
I don't think he really hurt any one campaign more than another. Uh, he, he really appears to have had widespread support uh, that, that, drew from, uh, that drew from potential voters from both sides. Now, Don, I heard this morning you spoke to Paul Lavoie. Uh, what was his reaction to losing the race? Well, you know, uh, it was, it was, uh, he'd, had about, uh, he'd had about 12 hours to kind of uh, let the news sink in, and, and he was very upbeat. He said, you know, he, that uh, for the first time in eight years, he's looking forward to kind of being, a, uh, being on the sidelines. He's been an elected official in Trumbull for eight years, and uh, so now he's you know, going to kind of uh, head back to private life. He didn't really close the door on running for office again. Uh, you know, I, I did ask him that, and he said that he's he's looking forward. He's not really planning to to run to run, but uh, you know, his he's always willing to help out his party or his town should they uh, should they call. He you know was uh, was was gracious. You know, said wished uh, wished Vicky good luck with uh, with her administration. Said he hopes she governs well and um, and keeps Trumbull the desirable place to live that it's all, that it's always been. So uh, he was. You know, he he was more upbeat than I expected, and uh, you know, and and you know, he's he's got a lot going on. He's uh, you know, he's 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 a busy guy. He's always, you know, he's always involved in a lot of things. So uh, you know, you'll you'll be seeing him. He's around. What about Michael Redgate? Has he talked at all about his future plans? He he says that uh, he, he's you know he, he his supporters were kind of saying you know don't put your signs away just yet or, or keep them keep them where you can get to them. He uh, he he also said he is willing to help Vicky Tesoro any way he can. But um, you know, but again, he also not really closing the door on a potential run for first selectman in two years. He said that if he, if he feels two years from now that uh, that there is a need in Trumbull for a third candidate, that uh, that he is kind of standing by should the should the people or should his supporters kind of uh, really nudge him that way again. But uh, he, he's another one in that his his campaign was uh, was was very upbeat. It was a pretty happy crowd. I don't think they really expected to win. I think they're, they 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 uh, they were happy with their turnout, and they kind of feel like they sent a message to the voters of Trumbull that uh, that that you know that they're that they're tired of uh, of, of partisanship, uh, and they feel that. Drawing 1,500 votes out of uh, out of about a little over 10,000 uh, was certainly uh, was certainly a very strong message. He thought, he thought to the two parties. Any word from Tim Herbst, first selectman right now, who's who does not did not run for re-election because he's focusing on uh, his run for governor. Any word from him on this? Yes, he uh, he did he did speak to Vicky last night. Uh, they they chatted for a couple of minutes just about um, about transition and things like that. Uh, I also did get a press release from him this morning. I was going to ask him. He he is not shy about sending a press release. So I was like, there must be a press release coming if it has not already. So what did he say? In the uh, well, you know, he he did. He sort of uh, it, it was it was kind of the most nondescript uh, congratulations you can imagine. He did say, you know, look, he would have he, he clearly would have rather that a Republican had uh, had won that race uh, you know he would have liked to have you know kind of had had the uh, had the legacy sort of continue and uh, so he was you know disappointed that uh, that Vicky had won but you know he and he did also kind of take t take pains to to, to kind of uh, you know to play the card of you know and are you better off now than you were eight years ago he did comment you know when I took office Trumbull was on the brink of financial ruin which is a bit of hyperbole I would say but uh, but he did say you know of course I would have preferred to be succeeded by a Republican but elections are tough and uh, in this contest an independent candidate took a, you know over a thousand votes in a low turnout affair and the Democrat won I congratulate Vicky on her victory I hope she will honor and uphold the proven reforms we have implemented and the bold actions we have taken to make Trumbull one of the most sought after communities in the state so that's uh, Tim Herbst's thoughts on uh, on last night's elections. One of the things Kate and I batted around a little bit last night in discussing this was Vicky's performance two years ago when she came within a few hundred votes of beating Herbst. How much did that add to her name recognition and her viability as a candidate? Well, you know, that's an interesting question because she had been on the town council. And, uh, and when she was on the town council, uh, th there were seven districts. And even though we sort of think of town council as being, you know, a fairly high elected office in town uh, compared to, say, uh, you know, board of finance, uh, you do have to think that when you are elected to the town council, six people out of every seven have never seen your name on a ballot before. Mm. So I think, um, I think there was a certain familiarity that people, ha that people felt with her now. Also, she, uh, she's been on the board, of ed uh, the board of finance for the last year and a half or so. And um, people have kind of gotten used to seeing her making financial decisions. So I, I do think that, that being on the ballot two years ago definitely helped her. And also, there's really nothing like running for a top spot, whether it's in a town or for governor or for president for that matter. There's really nothing like it being at the top of the ticket. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and until you've done it, you know, it's, uh, it's something that you really can't prepare for. So I think she was really much more prepared for this campaign than she was two years ago. She kind of knew what she was, get, she was in for. You know, I asked her this morning, I said, you know, what, what made you think you want to do this to yourself again? Mm -hmm. and, uh, and she had said that she had, that she had, you know, having been through the process of being a candidate, uh, that, that she was, you know, better prepared and really better at staying on message this time than she was two years ago. Interesting. All right.
right, Don. Well, very interesting race. You can get more details at TrumbullTimes.com. We're going to step out for a quick break, come back, start wrapping things up here on CT Pulse right after this. Black Horse Garage, we fulfill all your sports car needs. We specialize in manufacturer recommended service and aftermarket high performance parts and installation. We have one of the nation's top storage facilities and offer a high end collision department that understands your need for detail. Visit blackhorsegarage.com for more. Lead and Durier, New Canaan's home center and full service lumber yard. Everything for your home and improvement projects. We also carry seasonal items, barbecue grills, housewares, newest LED light bulbs, doors, windows, and much more. Weed and Durier, 21 Grove Street, New Canaan, a division of Northeast Building Supply. We the Kitchen Center offers quality cabinetry and affordable pricing. Visit our showroom for a free consultation with our professional design staff. For all your other home improvement needs, visit Northeast Building Supply, our full service lumber yard and window showroom. The Kitchen Center, a division of Northeast Building Supply. 1470 Barnum Avenue, Bridgeport. Welcome back to CT Pulse. And we can't stress enough, if you want more details on any of these local races, you have to check out your HAN Network Community News website. And the papers are out tomorrow as well, John. And I can't stress enough the job that those people did. We're out in all these towns in Fairfield County. And it was those people who every day cover the towns that they were in who put us in a position where we were able to provide the numbers and the insight that we were. It wasn't people jumping from polling place to polling place. It was the people who cover Reading covering Reading. It was the people who cover East and covering East and the people who cover Trumbull like Don in Trumbull. And it, their work really was what got us all that information last night. Yeah, and we have to say uh, roughly 11,000 people tuned in last night, which just goes to show People are interested in what's happening in their community. I mean, these are the elections that really decide a lot of your day-to-day -day life and how things are going to be going in your town. It's so important. Um, so we just want to thank everyone again, everyone behind the scenes, all our staff are helping us out. Uh, it was a fun night, and I think we're all ready for a nap. It was. It was. <laughs> you got to put the final in, papers to bed in now. In about a year, I'll think about doing it again. <laughs> all right. All right, we're going to wrap things up here on CT Pulse. Of course, Numex Sports coming up at 2 o'clock, and I'll see you tomorrow for your coffee break at 11. Have a great day.